You have just completed your registration with DoorDash and now you are a brand new DoorDash driver, but you got one thing left to do. You have to go through the application so that you know exactly how it works to make it easier for you as a brand new DoorDash driver doing DoorDash deliveries. So I have the application right here in front of me and I'm gonna give you this DoorDash walkthrough tutorial to help you navigate through this application. So at a glance right here, we have a map in hand, pretty simple and standard. So the map has different sections laid out. The dark gray line tells you where that section ends. And if I go to the Brassard one, we can see where that one ends. Now, when it comes to getting orders with DoorDash, there are three ways to start doing deliveries. One, it's called Dash Now. And you would see that on the bottom of the screen where I currently see Schedule. So if it's available for me to go online with DoorDash, I can click Dash Now. Now, one way you can always assure yourself availability is becoming a top dasher. Unfortunately, I don't have too much information about being a top dasher because I've never been one. But if you want to check out other YouTubers, I highly encourage it for you to know the information. The other option you have is I'm going to go over to this side where it's busy and I'm going to click there. We have an option called dash along the way. What this entails is if I'm going to that market or to that section, I can dash along the way for DoorDash to assign me orders. But here's the one thing we get dinged if we're late on deliveries. And when we're doing dash along the way, we could be 15 to 20 minutes away, but DoorDash will still assign you an order sometimes. Now, if you are more than 10 minutes away from that restaurant, you could get hit with an infraction from DoorDash for being late. So make sure if you're doing a dash along the way and you know that that restaurant is gonna take you more than 10 minutes to get there, don't accept it. Even though it does hit things like acceptance rates and we'll go through that in a little bit more, it is not worth you getting an infraction from DoorDash just because it's an order coming your way. Now the next one you can always do is schedule. So let's go ahead and click Brassard. The schedule button comes up. So I'm gonna hold, go ahead and click there. Now I can schedule between 12 a.m. to 2 a.m. and I can go ahead and save that dash. I can go in Long Gale and I can go ahead and click on schedule. Now, when I go ahead and click on Long Gale, we can see a different type of schedule. It's showing me Brassard and it's not showing me Long Gale. What we can always do is filter different areas if we wanna schedule in a different market. And how do we do that? On the far right hand side, you can see these three gear lines. Let's go ahead and hit them. Let me add Montreal into here and I'm gonna click save instantaneously the schedule for montreal has come out so i have 7 to 8 30 that's for today and then i have 12 to 4 a.m if you want to click on a separate date all you got to do is navigate along and you can click on separate dates so let's say for today for brassard i'm going to schedule the 12 to 3 a.m i'm going to click on the pencil and then i'm going to click on create now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to my home screen how do i get rid of a schedule if i don't want it simple you can go ahead and right now it says you've scheduled to dash in QC Brassard. Uh, I can go ahead and click on change and I can either modify my end time or start time or I can click delete dash. Another method you can do is on this far left hand side if we click on those three lines and we go ahead and click on schedule you can go ahead and click on so I clicked on the Saturday Saturday schedule because that's what I was set up on. I'm going to go ahead and click on that pencil and now I'm gonna click on delete dash. So you can either do it from the main screen or you can do it from the schedule section. It doesn't really matter. Now, sometimes we need support from DoorDash. So how do we get some support? Go in the far right hand corner where you see that question mark and go ahead and click it. You can get Dash your help for anything. Earnings, pay schedule, Dash your pay, Dash your help and contact support. If I click contact support, we're going to go ahead and click on a category, whichever one you want. Let's say it's a closed store, provide details and click chat with an agent. Another method, honestly, you can just do go to Google and find a DoorDash contact number. I prefer contacting versus the application itself, but it's completely up to you. Now, DoorDash also offers incentive pays. That's what they call their promos. So let's take a look at promos in the far right hand corner. And let's say Long Gale. So the promotion that we can clearly see right now is if I'm in Long Gale between 9.30 p.m. to 11.30 p.m., I can get a $2 peak pay or a $2 promo. So what that means is for every order I complete with DoorDash in between the time slot listed, they will top me up with $2 more per delivery. As you can probably see, a lot of those options tend to happen 
I mean, West Mountain is different, but in my location, they tend to happen within like 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. So it's different for every location. Now let's get to the good stuff. So first we have the text box, which is the messages, clearly nothing that's on the left hand side. We have the notification bell, which is updates, which have not been since 2020. And then let's get to the good stuff. So if I click the three lines in the far right hand corner, we can see that it's gonna pop up. I blurred out the first and last name and email address for my own security, but you have Dash. Dash is your homepage. You have schedule. We already checked out schedule. Schedule right there. So let's go down to earnings. Now, when it comes to DoorDash, they track you in the sense of active time and dash time. Your active time is how long are you actively completing an order. Your dash time is how long you're on DoorDash. Let's say, for example, I schedule for two hours, I'm online for two hours, then it will show my dash time is two hours. And then you have your balance, so how much you get paid. So if I get an order that's 18 minutes long, it takes me 18 minutes between driving to the restaurant, going to the customers and ending it there, it will show 18 under active time. Under dash time, it's how long I'm doing my shift with DoorDash. Now, deposits and transfers, it's very simple. You click there and they will show you how many times they have deposited into your bank account. Keep in mind for me, I'm more of an Uber Eats market with over 650 deliveries. With DoorDash, I've only completed 75. So seeing December, September, skips in between months, very common for me. But let's say I click on January 30th, we can see when they initiated the payment and when it was deposited into the bank account. If I click back on my screen, unfortunately DoorDash will take you completely out. So you have to resurface back into your earnings. But the advantage with the earnings is let's say January 23rd to January 29th. I want the breakdown to know how many orders was that 2657. If I click on it, Here's some information. My DoorDash pay was $9. Customers tip uh, $17.57. I was active doing deliveries for 47 minutes. My dash time was two hours and 48 minutes. I multi-app, so I always have DoorDash on in the background and I'm normally doing Uber Eats, so that's fine, with two deliveries. On Friday, I got the $17.57. And on Wednesday, I got the $9. Now, if you go ahead and open up that more, let's say the 1557, it'll give you even more of a breakdown. So this one delivery was for Arahova with a base offer of $5 from DoorDash and 1257 was my tip added at checkout. If there was an additional earnings, let's say DoorDash had to fix something on their mistake, they would implement it there. But there's a lot you can learn from the earning category here with DoorDash. We're gonna click those three things on the left hand side and now we're going to go to ratings this one's one of my favorite categories so ratings are out of a hundred deliveries and because I only have if I scroll down no it's on the other tab well I only have 75 deliveries but I got five stars DoorDash is a star system we got our customers feedback that we can see customers compliment so if you went above and beyond and they they starred you on everything you're gonna get the above and beyond category and of course you can learn more over there now, here's my favorite. It's a lot of people talk about where I get deactivated if I don't accept a lot of orders. Well, I would classify a 3% acceptance rate as significantly low and I'm not deactivated with DoorDash. Top dashers, I could be uh, wrong about this. I think it's either 90 or 95% in order to achieve top dasher. I am an individual that does not like to take crappy orders to achieve that milestone, but I'm definitely not against top dasher. It's just has not been for me. Completion rate. This one is where you need to be specific. You don't want to be canceling orders after you've accepted them. So they say that the target is 80%. Make sure you're above 80, otherwise you could be deactivated. So if you accept an order with DoorDash, don't go into the app and cancel afterwards. Complete the order, otherwise you could get deactivated. And that's where it shows my lifetime deliveries, 75. Not including canceled orders, but as we can see by 95 acceptance uh, cancellation rate or completion rate, I haven't canceled too many orders to begin with. Finishing things off here, on account, you have account details. Again, I've blurred out everything, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Your name, your information, your vehicle make, and um, emergency contact information. 
red card. So what red card is, is it's a, an actual card from DoorDash that allows you to do shop and pay orders for your customer. You get the card, you put the delight number and the last four digits of the card inside there, and then you'll be activating it. For me, I blurred mine out for privacy and security. You have settings, so they have uh, Google Maps in the application defaulted. You can choose Google Maps outside of the app or Waze. You can have the floaty emoji, you can have push notifications on. You can change things to dark mode. So now my screen is in dark mode. So preferably for me, I normally always keep it on there, but for the sake of the tutorial, I turned it off. And then lastly, you have your log out. So I'm not gonna click log out because then I gotta go shuffle for my password to find it. But this is your DoorDash application at a glance. I hope for a fact that it's going to help you when it comes to starting DoorDash deliveries. And I'll catch you lovelies in the next video.